If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. <laughs> Is that clear? Yeah, it's pretty clear, you said it twice. Now that was of course, ex-CEO Elon Musk giving us a very strong message in how he feels about advertisers who have been pulling out of his platform because of allegations that he is anti-Semitic. Now, if you're wondering what sparked that and what led to his apology tour in Israel, it was this. It started with a comment on X, I'm gonna read it to you. Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest crap about how Western Jewish populations are coming to the disgusting realization that those hordes of minorities that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. You want truth said to your face, there it is. And Musk responded to that by saying, you have said the actual truth. And followed that up with the ADL unjustly attacks the majority of the West, despite the majority of the West supporting the Jewish people and Israel. This is because they cannot, by their own tenants, criticize the minority groups who are their primary threat. It is not right and needs to stop. The other thing that I'll mention is, you know, Musk announced and and filed a lawsuit against Media Matters for America after Media Matters for America published a report claiming that the ads of various corporations are showing up on posts of anti-Semitic material. Uh, Musk obviously disagrees with that, uh, says that the methodology that Media Matters used um, is the reason why they got the kind of result that they did. So they're gonna hash that out in court. But the allegations of anti-Semitism is was led to certain companies basically pulling their ads from X. And he's super salty about it, it's pretty clear in the video that you saw. And we're gonna watch a little more in just a moment. But Cenk, I'm curious what you think because even me, like I see that there's a huge part of me that thinks like, yeah, yeah, you know, because the advertisers, they're super scared, they're terrified of their precious brands, right? And so because of that model being baked into media, and yes, in this case, social media platforms, it ends up watering down news analysis, uh, comments that people want to make about various things happening both domestically and internationally. So I understand the frustration toward people who are tired of that, right? But at the same time, you're going to destroy this business. And I think he knows that and I almost feel like he wants that and I'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, I don't think he wants it, but I think that now I'm beginning to understand when people say like he's on the spectrum somewhere. Uh, he's he's super awkward. That's gonna come into effect here. But first, let me break it down a little bit. It, actually, Andrew Ross Sorkin's face, though, when he said it, was really interesting <laughs> because he looked pained, like he pictured billions of dollars floating away into the vapor yeah. as uh, as Elon Musk was saying that. And, and I think that he was thinking like, oof, you sure, bro? Do <laughs> you want to say yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Look at his face. Yeah, amazing. like oh. Right, so because he's right, it's gonna vaporize billions. So uh, Twitter uh, was bought by Elon Musk for $44 billion. It's spiraling down to near zero now, which he's, Musk is gonna talk about, the real possibility that it'll go bankrupt. It was never worth $44 billion never. to begin with. So he kind of started at a really bad place and then things kind of devolved from there. Because it turns out that you do need employees to ensure that this platform is running smoothly and effectively. Um, and he literally made the user experience worse. The way worse. And the only way that it would be marginally better is if you pay for the X subscription, you'll get the verified mark and it allegedly functions a little better. But even people who have the check mark are saying, no, lots no. of glitches, lots of problems. Tons. Yeah. Okay, so uh, was what he said anti-Semitic? Largely, yes. Uh, so he's talking about the great replacement theory. And remember that the Nazis in Charlottesville uh, rep, uh, chanted, the Jews will not replace us. And then Tucker Carlson would uh, oftentimes said in his uh, uh, monologues on Fox News, immigrants will not replace us. So that this whole great replacement theory has been going around for some time. 
it was so bad, so toxic that that's why Elon Musk went to Israel. I mean, he didn't randomly go to Israel. Right. Was it an apology tour? Of course it was, right? But he's he views himself as a tough guy, and he's one of the richest men in the world, and so he feels like he doesn't have to compromise in anything. So the fact that he's being described as an apology tour has gotten really under his skin. But he compromises okay. all the time, including compromises in regard to his alleged free speech absolutism. Because look, while he didn't actually carry it out, he threatened to you know, um, ban any posts on X that uh, use the word de decolonialization, decolonialization or the phrase from the river to the sea. So he's threatened censorship, he didn't actually carry it out though. And then in regard to other countries that are much more censorious than the United States is, he was willing to abide by their rules and censor content on the platform on their behalf. Right, because it's not about censorship, it's about his ego. So when you, he's censoring on behalf of other people to make money, he doesn't mind. But if opinions he agrees with right. are being censored, right. then he catches feelings totally. and be like, you're not gonna censor me. I mean, people overall, wink. So as he said after advertisers, the CEO, the current CEO of Twitter had to be like, "Oh my God, what have you done? Because in that moment, the company's pretty much gone. Because advertisers are the most sensitive people on earth. They're also the most conservative, not politically, but by nature. So the minute someone says something like that, they're like, that's it. And a lot of the advertising deals get done by these guys greasing each other. Okay, just I'm keeping it real. I've been in the industry for all this time. Yeah. So, but there wasn't, to Anna's point, when he said that, it was a bit cathartic. Yes, totally. Because the advertisers control the content. So much in media, and and we since we won't be controlled, have had in such a difficult time. Right, just being able to even with giant numbers, giant numbers of viewers, barely maintaining sustainability because advertisers punish anything that's interesting. You know, it's interesting because I mean, we obviously do political content that runs into the same problem that conservative content creators run into, which is your videos end up getting demonetized, so you make no money off of it. The difference between us and conservatives though is rather than spending endless hours on air whining about it, you know, we find other ways to raise revenue so we can continue covering those stories that we find to be incredibly important. But I'm not gonna lie and say I enjoy that. That's incredibly frustrating, time consuming, I can't stand it. And, and I think that that frustration that I feel in regard to having to do that all the time is why it was cathartic to see Elon Musk say that to advertisers. But now let's get to what this means for X because in the rest of the interview, he seems to accept the fact that this is incredibly irresponsible and destructive if you're trying to run a business, let's watch. What this advertising boycott is is, is going to do? It's, it's going to kill the company. And you think that the I, I, but, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. But there are those advertisers. I imagine are going to say they're going to say we didn't kill the company. Oh yeah, they're going to say tell to tell to Earth. But they're going to say that they're going to say Elon that you killed the company because you said these things. And that they were inappropriate things, and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. Right? Let's that's that's and, what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. So, man, okay. This, then this goes back to we'll, the, we'll both make our cases, right? And we'll see what the outcome is. Listen, I don't know how Earth is going to respond to it. <laughs> I can only say what I would want to respond with, and it's based. Yeah. <laughs> based. <laughs> Been waiting for this day forever. Love it. Elon Musk, I think I might be your biggest fan. <laughs> why, because he's gonna wipe out Twitter? Yeah. That's okay, I wanted to be clear about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because yeah, look, um, this is why I said, uh, now I get it, he might be on the spectrum somewhere. Tell to Earth, what, what are you talking about, brother? Right, like Earth is not gonna be like, oh, who was right, Elon or all of the advertisers in the world. Yeah. That's not even a thing, they don't understand that. Here's what- And if you're gonna make that case, make it clearer like we are. Like here's another thing I get frustrated with advertisers. Do you know that they ban both racism and anti-racism at the same degree? So they're like, oh, if you're talking about racial issues or injustice, we're, we don't wanna be involved in that conversation at all. 
So you know the racists will get demonetized, and so will the people fighting back against it. Now that's so frustrating. Now having said that, am I gonna be like, okay, then I'm not gonna take any advertiser money and I'm gonna tell Earth. <laughs> well, actually, ironically, you can't tell Earth because then you won't be on the air anymore. Right, and so like in his mind, you know, because of advertisers taking a stand and not wanting to have their ads, um, you know, featured on X, it's going to destroy the company. X will cease to exist, and there will be what, like a massive uprising, and people will be really upset at the advertisers. And then, I mean, and then what? And then what? And I, and I don't think that's even going to happen. I think what's very likely going to happen in today's media cycle, where everyone has an insanely short attention span. Is they're gonna regroup and they're gonna find another platform to, to do what they're doing, right? Like it's, but look, let's wait and see what Earth does. I'm very curious, I'm very curious. But will this actually destroy the company? I think it's worth getting into that as well. Well, it turns out that X could lose as much as $75 million in advertising revenue by the end of the year as dozens of major brands pause their marketing campaigns. The documents list more than 200 ad units of companies from the likes of Airbnb, Amazon, Coca-Cola, and Microsoft, many of which have halted or are considering pausing their ads on the social network. Now, um, the documents list how much ad revenue ex employees fear the company could lose through the end of the year if advertisers do not return. In the last three months of 2021, the last year the company reported fourth quarter earnings before Musk took over, the company recorded $1.57 billion in revenue, of which nearly 90% came from advertising. Using advertise or US advertising on the platform is down nearly 60% this year. So clearly, it's a bit of a disaster. To to say the least. And then Jenk, before you jump in, I have to go to one other fantastic moment in this interview. Let's take a look. So I will certainly not pander. And Jonathan, like the only reason I'm here is because you are a friend. Like, what was my speaking fee? You don't, you're not making was, any. Hey, first exactly. of all, I'm Andrew, but uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's okay. Uh, second of all, we've known each other for a very long time. Andrew Sorkin. Um, <laughs> Yes. And um, <laughs> listen, you know, <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to illustrate is that sometimes I say the wrong thing. Sometimes he says the wrong thing. No, I love that moment. I thought it was fun. He's a very good friend. They're very good friends. Yeah, he is so, he's such a riddle, man. Uh, because Starlink is an amazing company. Tesla is a wonder in some ways and is, I don't know, I don't know if it's a partly a mirage, partly real with Tesla, but Starlink is certainly a great company. He's certainly done amazing work at other companies, yet he doesn't create these things, but he has marketed them well. He has run some of them incredibly well to the point of making obviously him one of the top two richest people in the world. And then you see he overpaid by at least $20 billion for Twitter and then drove it into the ground. And if you're gonna tell the advertisers to, to F off, you have to have a plan already in place where you're going to replace that revenue. I mean, this is just fundamental business. No, I right? think I just realized something, Jank. Yeah. Is surviving in media harder than science? But it actually is. No, it's it's really hard. It well, is. It is really hard. I'm not and I'm never going to say that like surviving in media is harder than, you know, building a successful like Starlink, you know, that's I No, mean, no, no, it definitely is more is is harder because that look, if you're good at science and by the way, it's not Elon Musk, he hires scientists, no, yes, right? Yes, yes. And that's what they're great at and they just, you know, and they do what they're good at and that their brains are structured that way. And that's a straightforward business. Right. Media is not a straightforward business. It's not. No, you it's have to have you have to navigate people's feelings and relationships, etc. No, no, I don't care about that. And <laughs> no, no. No, but like for advertisers, they're a super sensitive lot. Yes, for example. that's right. Diversifying it. Because if you look at the media landscape, it is now constantly changing because of digital media, because of so many other options that people have, right? So the competition is probably more fierce than it's ever been. You're because of the nature of, you know, internet content, you're constantly chasing algorithms, which of course it's super opaque and you kind of have to figure things out for yourself. No, it is difficult. I'm not going to purport that it it's easy. A reporter once called me and and, and said, "Your competition is a graveyard because almost every company in our industry has gone under." 
And so, you know, you could laugh at Elon Musk and say, oh my God, I can't believe how much he's blowing this. But especially if he's a dude on the spectrum, running a media company is a very, very difficult thing to do. And navigating not only personal relationships with advertisers, etc., but being public and stating your opinions publicly and then getting the reaction back and being able to see where the audience is going and, and head in the right direction, those are all very difficult tasks. And it doesn't look like it matches his skill set. So that $44 billion is largely gone now. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.